Hi everyone, my name is Robert Biandini, and today we're going to learn a little bit about the GPC, which uses a new operating system called GOS. The GPC also features VIA's PC-2500 motherboard. I've been reading about Star Trek The Motion Picture on the Wikipedia website and decided it's the DVD I want to watch, so I minimize the Firefox internet browser, which sends it to the lower right-hand corner of the computer screen. You see it blinking there. That area of the screen is called the iBox. Any application that has been minimized is sent to the iBox. The DVD has now loaded, and I'm clicking on it so you can see it a little better on the desktop screen. I'm now going to the iBar, which has all the application icons at the bottom of the screen. I've clicked on Zine, which is great for audio files, video files, and DVDs, as and CDs too. I've just started the DVD. Now I'm going to right click and go to the title menu, bypassing these legal warnings. You have no doubt noticed that Zine is doing a great job with audio, video, and menus in this DVD. Keep a close eye on the mouse, which you'll notice appears and disappears a couple of times. This happens because I move the mouse with my hand, making the mouse appear, and Zine automatically compensates after a few moments by causing the mouse to disappear. is just beginning. Ta -ta. Star Trek, the motion picture. I was able to move through the trailer using the slider, and that is DVD playback on the GPC. Google Docs and Spreadsheets is an online office suite. By inputting my existing Google account information, I can gain access to the office suite. The Remember Me on this computer checkbox has a check mark in it. That means if I close Firefox, the internet browser, I can come back later and not have to sign in again. I have a document called Dear Friends that I've been working on. By clicking on the document, I gain access. The words I typed last time are still here. I'd like to add a little bit to my letter now. I'm going to make an obvious spelling mistake to show you how to use the spell check feature in Google Docs and Spreadsheets. By choosing the check spelling option, all of my misspelled words are highlighted in yellow. By single left clicking on each yellow word, solutions are presented. In this case, I choose shall. Save and close sends me back to the screen where I was before. I could start a new document, spreadsheet, presentation, or create a new folder using the new button. Google Calendar is another web-based application from Google. By clicking on the Google Calendar icon in the iBar, I am taken to the appropriate website. Microsoft Outlook users and users of other calendar-capable software should find Google Calendar intuitive and will enjoy features such as email reminders. I do not have to sign in to Google Calendars because I never signed out of the last Google application I used, Google Docs and Spreadsheets. By clicking on an existing event in Google Calendar, I am taken to its details. In this case, the details are shopping with friends on Thursday, January 10th at the mall. It turns out that I'm actually scheduled to go to the mall all day on the 10th, but my friends have called me and asked me to switch to the 11th. By clicking on the 10th and switching it to the 11th on the calendar that popped up, I've made the change. By signing out of Google Calendar, 
I will have to then sign in to any Google online application I use in the future, such as Google Docs and Spreadsheets. At some point, you may wish to add applications to or remove applications from the iBar. To do so, right-click on any existing icon in the iBar and select Add Applications. Then, find the application you want to add in Application Categories. Click the Add button. Scroll down to the bottom of the iBar Applications list. Click on the application you added and use the Up button to move it into position. Up equals left. Now that Robots has been added to my iBar, I click on it. After messing around with the program for a few moments, I realized that this game really isn't for me. So I quit the program, right click on its application icon in the iBar, Select Add Applications again. This time I'm going to do my procedure in reverse. I'm going to find Robots in the iBar Applications, then the Delete button, then Apply. A faster way to delete icons from the iBar is to right click on the icon you want to remove and say Remove Icon. OpenOffice is a free Office suite that rivals and is compatible with Microsoft Office. To get there in the GOS, go Start applications, office, and then choose the kind of open office program you want to open. In this example I've chosen to open the word processor. Open office is included by default in the GOS. Now that the word processor has opened, I can click on the paper in the window and start typing. In this case I'm going to start typing a letter to friends. It is worth noting here that Microsoft Word is similar to OpenOffice's word processing program, Microsoft Excel is similar to the spreadsheet program, and Microsoft PowerPoint is similar to the presentation program. In this letter, I am telling my friends that I prefer to use OpenOffice instead of Google Docs and Spreadsheets. Surprisingly, OpenOffice doesn't know how to spell its own name. After checking that the name is indeed spelled correctly, I right-click, say Add, and Standard. That will add OpenOffice to the OpenOffice Dictionary. Going File Save As will allow me to save this document to my computer's hard drive. First, I need to give the document a name. In this case, I call it Friends2. Clicking on the triangle next to Browse for Other Folders would allow me to navigate to other folders besides the Document folder, but saving it there is fine. File Exit will allow me to quit the OpenOffice word processor. Sometimes you might want to run a program that you can't find in the iBar or any of the other menus. Try going Start, Run Command, and typing in the name of the program you want to run. For example, I downloaded a program called Genome Screenshot that I would like to run now. You notice that Genome Screenshot showed up in the search results before I even finished typing the name. I've now saved my screenshot to the desktop, but it's not there. To have it show up, I have to right-click on one of the icons that's already there and click on Refresh View. The last thing I would like to show you how to do today is how to use the Google Search area on your desktop. Click in the white area next to where it says Google Search and enter a query. Search results appear in a window and you can click on any of them, just as if you were in the Firefox web browser. But this happens more quickly because you don't have to start the Firefox web browser first. You can search directly from your desktop. And, just like you were in the Firefox web browser, you can make the window fill your entire screen. Thanks for watching.